And the reasons why you know, I got into to Blender Beam to start with is, you know, I'll show some of the things I use here, but there's so many softwares that are being used in the market, you know, that are quite bad <laughs> at working with IFC. And this is actually initially what kind of got me started with, with, with Blender Beam and, and open source software in general. I'm just using a sample IFC file here. And essentially what I want to show is what's relevant to someone like me. You know, people think about BIM and they generally focus on, let's say the CAD software, or the design stage, mm -hmm. but, you know, and, and as important as it is, you know, there's a lot of stuff we, we can do with all that interesting data after a model's been created. You know, we're talking about tendering, yeah. talking about planning a construction site, purchasing materials, organizing logistics, you know, creating schedules, really detailed cost estimations, optimization stuff. Like it's so cool. I mean, it's a shame not to use all that data. So mm -hmm. my use case for Blender BIM is, you know, receiving models that we haven't modeled internally. Okay, so this would be a scenario where, you know, I'll have a look at a model and the geometry looks actually pretty good, right? So it's something that I can probably start with, right? Mm -hmm. But the parameters are either sh <laughs> they're missing or, you know, they're, they're just all over the place, you know, as you often know, you know, is the case. Yeah. So uh, I open up Blend. Yeah. Are you using uh, also other tools to verify this? Are you using Solibri or something similar? Actually, not anymore. <laughs> um, but you, you used it before. You have yeah, experienced I, using it. Yes, I've used all the usual suspects, you know, like Navisworks, Libri, the site. I mean, there's all these uh, other softwares and I'm not an open source absolutist. You know, I, I'm not someone who's going to say, oh, I'm only going to use open source software. I just use whatever makes my life easier. And the fact that I'm using Blender BIM is because it makes my life easier. And some things are just better here. And, and because it's open source, I can make sure that what it's telling me it's doing is really what it's doing, you know? As and it's opposed... native IFC. That's it's the most important IFC. thing. It's the yeah. only tool that you will find actually. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's fantastic. But there's other software, open source software that I use as well. So I don't know if you know of a software called uh, XBIM Explorer. No. Maybe I'll uh, quickly show you what that looks like. What do you it's use also... that for? So the thing I like using XBIM Explorer for, it's, it's really like a, it's a bare bones desktop viewer, but it has a really nice and quick validate feature. So uh -huh. if you just import an IFT file into XBIM Explorer, you click on validate and it quickly shows you a summary of any errors if they, if they exist in the model. And, and typically, you know, it's whether the syntax is correct in the IFC file, whether the geometry uh, has any issues. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really quick and it's just kind of really nice, gives a report and this gives me a quick idea of whether the model I'm working with is, is usable or whether it's kind of shit, you know, I, I need to... Interesting. So this is Xperia Explorer, just Google Xperia Explorer, it's open source. Free open source or you need yeah, to buy it? No, 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 it's absolutely free. Absolutely and is free. it updated or it's a old software that nobody is using anymore? No, it is. I mean, if you if you open up the, the GitHub page, you'll notice that, you know, the issues are recent and also the, the updates are recent, you know, so they had a commit as recently as September 5, you know. Okay, that's interesting. I guess you can do the same stuff with Blender Beam as well. Yeah, exactly. So the reason why I'm saying this is because, and, and I think Diana said this a couple of times as well, is, you know, open source is kind of this big, beautiful thing and you, you, you shouldn't just be using Blender Beam, you should be mm -hmm. using everything you can, you know, whatever makes your life easier. And yeah. Said, in my workflow, I use some paid software and I use some open source software and all that, you know, my, my only criteria is that it works, that I, that I can trust it, you know, and that it brings me value. If an open source product is free, but it doesn't bring me any value, then I'm not going to use it. Simple as that, you know. But as you said, what I just showed you in XP Explorer, you can actually do with Blender Beam as well. The only reason why I don't do it is just because I'm used to XP Explorer, honestly. <laughs> um, and I could probably do it here. And I'll, I'll even show you how you could do it uh, in Blender BIM a little bit later if you want. After validating it in XP Explorer or Blender BIM and there are no crazy issues, then what I usually like to do is first, you know, just have an overall look at the model. You know, basically I'll, I'll literally sit there and I'll, I'll, I'll play around with the model and I'll start filtering it. So one thing I'll also do is look at the, the, the project browser or the, the outliner here. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. People should look at uh, the video with you and Dion where he talks about types and, and exploring the structure here. But I'll look at basically I'll do the same things as him. I'll, I'll, I'll check at the types and I'll make sure that the types 
don't look ridiculous. As he mentioned, often you get from a Revit export, you know, hundreds of types that are literally just copies of one another. And one thing I'll quickly look here is I look at how the stories are set up. You know, uh, one thing that's also a common issue is you get stories that are duplicated or are, you have multiple stories that are offset by, say, the finished floor level or the, the raw uh, floor level. And this is a mistake. You know, you should have clear stories mm -hmm. defined. What do you so, do if you get, uh, as you said, uh, a lot of uh, duplicates? What do you do in that case? Just provide feedback to somebody to fix it or you fix it in Blender BIM? So it depends on what kind of relationship I have uh, with the architect or the engineer and what kind of contractual relationship I have, you know? So if it's a well-defined project, then, you know, the original CAD user will be liable for, for fixing any issues or these kinds of issues will have been documented in the BIM execution plan. But often this isn't the case, unfortunately, in, in our industry. <laughs> but even so, sometimes I'll, I'll give, you know, an architect a quick call and ask them whether, you know, they're happy, you know, with, with their export and whether maybe they might not want to try and fix it. Sometimes they, they do, really, they sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't have enough time or they probably just don't want to. But I think, you know, Dion also showed you, you have in, quality control here and IC patch. I believe there's a recipe for merge duplicate types by tag. So I think this is something that he showed in the last video that you had with him. And this will kind of try and, and have a look at the types and merge ones that, that are actually the same. So that's mm -hmm. one thing you could do, yeah. How do you make this sustainable? Because if you need, like every time when the architect is issuing a new revision of the model, mm -hmm. if he made, say, makes any changes, how do you make this sustainable so you don't need to fix this every time when you get a new export? Is there any way to do it? Yeah, that's that's actually a really, really good question. Uh, one thing I'll say is that usually, you know, um, for, if we're looking at the construction uh, phase, you know, uh, this isn't that big of an issue because the frequency of the, your model updates isn't, isn't that fast. However, everything you see here, um, all the functionality that you see here is based on IFC Open Shell, right? So everything that's happening with the model is, is happening through IFC Open Shell. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing stopping you running IFC Open Shell and automating all these processes if you know what you're doing. Uh, what I mean is, and I think, you know, maybe Thomas Einen or, and, and Dion mentioned this also as well, you know, you could easily run IFC Open Shell on a server and automate a lot of these tasks. You know, especially, you know, if you do something once, you could kind of develop your own recipe, I guess, for working with a certain architect or with a certain model and then try and reapply these things. So one example is, you know, the patches. You see this patch inside the Blender BIM UI, but there's nothing stopping you from running this just directly in code or on a server. The scenario could be you automate the export of an IC file or you receive an IC file. You automatically start running a list of patch recipes mm -hmm. to do something with the file, right? And I think, you know, if, if you're savvy enough or if, you know, if there's any companies <laughs> listening to this right now, I think they, they, they should look into that for the future. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, I don't like the idea of that. I think we should all be a little more emboldened to really give feedback back to the client, uh, you know, the owner of the building, I guess, in the end, and also yeah. to the architects. They need to know that they're making mistakes or they're, they're doing things suboptimally. I understand that completely. That is the right way to do it. BIM management tab at the top on the, on Blender, you custom this view for uh, BIM management, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so uh, I think th that's something we, we need to really improve with, with Blender BIM, you know, and, and the thing is Dion and, and the other developers, you know, working really hard on functionality and all this sort of stuff, and, and I think this stuff will come. But yeah, you can actually customize how everything looks and create different tabs, you know. So <laughs> I have here basically two tabs. I have BIM management where I have on one panel, I have the object properties, uh -huh. And on one panel here, I have the scene or what I like to call the project properties. Uh -huh. And this kind of looks very similar to as you'd expect in something like, you know, Revit or maybe even the site or, or Bexel Manager. You know, you have kind of separate windows or containers mm -hmm. for specific functions. So this is what I like to have object properties and then my project properties mm -hmm. here, as mm -hmm. well as a, a view of the, the project browser. And then in scripting, scripting is what I use when I want to play around with some stuff or write some small scripts to, mm -hmm. to automate some stuff or, or mm -hmm. even just check whether what I'm assuming is actually correct.